Good afternoon, everyone. My name is uh, Benjamin Hertz. I'm a Senior Pedagogical Manager at the School Education Gateway. Um, and it's a real pleasure to welcome you to um, tonight's webinar on building school-based learning communities for MOOC-based learning. Um, let me tell you a bit of a backstory to this webinar before I introduce the two speakers. Um, as you will surely know, on the School Education Gateway, we've been offering MOOCs, massive open online courses for teachers for several years now. And um, back in 2019, we felt we need to do a slightly better job in ensuring um, that these MOOCs become a bit more accessible and available to more teachers. We know that they have a lot of benefits. Um, you know, we can reach many teachers through them. Um, it's a great opportunity to create an international community of teachers, etc. cetera. Um, but we also were very aware that there are many teachers out there who struggle to really benefit from these, um, um, uh, from these courses, um, especially if you're maybe not so confident with your English language skills or your digital competence, then it can be quite daunting to participate in a course. So we felt we had to do something about that and we wanted to find a good mechanism to ensure that we help teachers who don't have that type of confidence and competence um, to get on board and, and benefit from the courses. And for that purpose, back in 2019, we launched um, a small pilot with um, eight teachers from across Europe. Uh, and these teachers investigated um, how to really address this problem. And one of the key things that they did um, and they tested for the last two years um, was to try out implementing study groups in their school um, that would take the MOOCs together. So it was bringing the international or the European element of the MOOC into the local context of the school and making sure that those two dynamics work well together. Um, and out of that work, um, quite a few interesting resources have come, a lot of interesting insights have come, um, and that's the purpose of today's webinar, to share that with you. Um, and before I pass on to the two speakers today, I just quickly want to mention also that um, we have recently launched a self-study module, which in a way addresses the same kind of topics that we will be covering in this MOOC, uh, in this webinar. So if you are still interested in um, finding out more information and accessing all the resources coming from this little pilot, then I highly encourage you to take a look at that um, on the School Education Gateway. So enough for me. Um, I do now want to give the opportunity for our two speakers to uh, explain a bit about their experiences of participating in this pilot. And it's a real pleasure to welcome Elena Petzi from Italy and Christina Nicolaita, who were both very active in this pilot and very successful in setting up study groups at their schools, um, inviting their colleagues to learn with them and help them to learn using the MOOCs. And actually, both of them have progressed much further than what we had originally in mind, and I'm sure they'll be telling you also quite a bit about that. Final word, um, we are about to launch um, a, a continuation of this pilot um, in the context of the eTwinning Schools uh, initiative. So keep an eye out uh, for a, a call for applications. Uh, and if you're interested in participating in this in the future, then um, um, yeah, this, this is a good opportunity. Uh, more on that right at the end of the webinar from my colleague, Effie. So without further ado, um, over to you, Christina and Elena. Thank you very much, Ben. Elena, if you can go to the next slide. Um, hello, everybody. My name is Cristina Nicolaita. I am uh, a teacher in Gheorghe Magheru School, Caracal, Romania. And I will start by uh, pointing out this new opportunity for you all uh, participating in uh, this new uh, self study module on uh, School Education uh, Gateway Teacher Academy. Uh, it is uh, a module that um, we are uh, uh, um, participating in this webinar for. So our webinar is presented to you under the frame of this uh, um, self-study module. And it tries to help uh, teachers and uh, school management to improve uh, uh, the um, professional development of their teachers uh, using uh, these great MOOCs, they, uh, they are uh, free, they are, um, they, uh, they can be um, studied in uh, your own pace, so uh, it is, uh, it is great for all schools and all teachers to, to join it. But before we start uh, presenting you our experience in this uh, 
pilot project and uh, in uh, and our result maybe it is great to know who is here with us today so please if you can join our uh, slido on slido.com you can use the uh, code 21621 and please answer uh, those little questions about you and your experience with uh, MOOCs. So the first question is, where are you from? We are waiting to see uh, the countries you are joining uh, us in this uh, uh, webinar this afternoon. We are hoping you are. Oh, Germany is the first one. Welcome, Germany, in joining us today. We are very happy you are interested in our uh, in our uh, webinar. Turkey also. We know Turkish teachers are oh, very active and they are taking part in many courses and many um, projects. Portugal. Romania, welcome Romania. We are hoping more of you can can uh, join Spain, North Macedonia. Welcome today. Sweden, Spain. Great variety of countries. Thank you for joining us this afternoon. Moldova is here, France, Tunisia, Greece. Thank you all very much. Elena, if you can go to the next question. Oh, even Rome, Italy, welcome. Yeah, Christina, I don't think it allows me to to go. I've tried to. OK. I don't know if you can do it yourself. OK, uh, the the poll uh, asks you two more questions. You can go and I will uh, access it at, uh, and I will tell you later on uh, the answers to the questions. Yeah, I'm so sorry, for the moment, so for the moment, 37 uh, answers. And they are uh, still uh, growing in number 39. OK, maybe we can go back to the presentation and I will access it from my phone later. So uh, I will introduce you now the context of our project, of our pilot project uh, on School Education Gateway Teacher Academy, which is, as you can see, a place for teacher and school staff to learn about and get interested in the European Action for Schools. Uh, the two great sister platforms, School Education Gateway and Detwinning, help all uh, teachers uh, both in engaging in European projects, but in growing in uh, their uh, professional development. Um, what are the main actions a teacher can do on uh, these two platforms? On School Education Gateway, they can uh, get informed about educational policies and also make their opinion count uh, by um, uh, responding in surveys about their opinion. 
And in uh, on eTwinning platform, they can join this uh, great, the greatest European uh, teacher community and uh, take part in uh, projects, uh, find eTwinning partners, um, get guidance uh, from the uh, network of ambassadors on, and from their uh, national uh, support. Uh, about the professional development on school education gateway, teachers can uh, join the webinars, the online courses. Uh, uh, they can find uh, on-site courses and mobility opportunities. They can use the resources and publications. But also on eTwinning, there are uh, online seminar, learning events, uh, moderated thematic groups, uh, professional development, workshops and conferences, and uh, more of that, uh, their work can be um, uh, uh, valorized uh, with it winning um, uh, quality labels, it winning awards, and it winning school uh, labels. Elena? Yes, uh, I hope you can hear me. Yes. Yeah, okay. So, uh, to, well, uh, first of all, hi everybody. I'm the, the second presenter for today. I'm Elena Pezzi. I work and I teach Spanish in a secondary school in Italy. And uh, together with Christina and the other members of the, the group that you can see here in the in the picture, uh, I took part in the in the pilot that Christina has already explained. Uh, so to to go further a little bit deeper on the on the context of the of the pilot. Uh, you can have a, a deeper understanding by reading the article and you can find it uh, on Teacher Academy um, the news uh, within the, the portal. But uh, just to, to briefly sum up the, the idea, the rationale of this pilot is uh, the, the idea was to uh, have light on how online courses can be used more systematically at school level and also as Benjamin said at the beginning of this webinar not only at uh, school level but uh, in some countries at a broader level a regional level or even national level to support a teachers professional development so um, it has been a, a great adventure to, uh, to to understand and to try to to try to find uh, solutions to involve more teachers to uh, to get familiar with MOOCs and to to take part in MOOCs uh, in schools Christina, thank you. Is yours. Uh, thank you. I have uh, checked again the, the, the Slido. We have 65 answers already. Uh, many other countries joined us, but uh, unfortunately, the second question uh, doesn't appear. So uh, we will ask you to, to answer about uh, your um, experience in uh, uh, the next slides uh, where Elena has uh, some padlets for you. She prepared some great uh, padlets to, to ask about your uh, experience. Uh, about the, um, pro the pilot project coordinators, you have already uh, met uh, Benjamin Hertz. Uh, he was one of the coordinators together with uh, Nair Carrera they are great uh, uh, professionals, experts in their field, but they were like uh, part of the team. They were like uh, a team uh, made for us and uh, guided uh, us uh, through the work in this um, pilot project. We are very happy that uh, the results were, uh, were great. If you can go on, Elena, thank you. So at the beginning, uh, there were 10 teachers in uh, the pilot project from 10 different countries in Romania because the, the pilot project needed uh, uh, more of uh, educational systems, uh, parts of Europe, uh, 
uh, uh, teacher development um, uh, strategies in different countries uh, uh, to see if uh, teachers from different countries uh, have different inter interests in, uh, in professional development. So uh, we started um, uh, as a, a great uh, hardworking team. Many of the teachers in the pilot um, uh, had great, great results. And we are introducing now uh, part of our experience. Yeah, uh, the experience, uh, as you can imagine, had a uh, before and an after. Uh, the, the time of pandemic of coronavirus uh, supposed a, a great uh, change in, uh, in the pilot itself. So uh, we can summarize it uh, as fa the face to face phase step versus uh, online phase. Uh, so what we are talking today is uh, both are both experiences. What happened in 2019 where face to face meetings were allowed and what happened in the next two years, one year and a half in 2020 and 2021 where uh, and when just online meetings, online training is allowed. So, Christina, uh, thank you, Elena. It's yours. I mute myself because of this. Okay. Thank you. Uh, I will start with uh, the first step in our experience the face to a face phase. Uh, where uh, I started with uh, promotion, uh, asking for head teacher support and the press survey to find out about my colleagues, uh, the interests in, uh, in uh, the themes they wanted to, to follow, uh, to attend in uh, the MOOCs um, offered by uh, School Education Gateway. Then I assisted my colleagues with uh, registering and surfing the portal to get familiar with, with it. Uh, organized group studies during the models, modules with my colleagues, both uh, in school but online, although the face-to-face -face, um, um, meetings were allowed, but uh, because of the school schedule, uh, we couldn't uh, find out uh, an appropriate time for all the teachers uh, involved in the courses to meet. So I organized uh, two meetings uh, per week, uh, one in the morning and one in the afternoon, but my colleagues could always um, reach me through uh, social media, through a WhatsApp group of our school, so uh, we organized um, uh, school uh, uh, study groups. Uh, um, at the end of the course, uh, we uh, collected uh, the outcomes, the lesson plans uh, created by uh, the colleagues uh, to, to use them in other contexts, to implement them during lessons. And we uh, have a post survey and um, open door lessons where uh, teachers uh, uh, shared their experience and um, presented how they can apply in the class what uh, they have learned during the courses. Uh, what worked well? I can tell you head teacher support was uh, essential. I am uh, uh, very uh, lucky to have uh, a great head teacher with uh, uh, very open to all uh, uh, European project and experiences. So my activity was well supported. Also, I used social media that was for me a great, great help. Uh, we used collaboration and group management tools like, I don't know, Google um, Docs, uh, 
uh, Zoom, Meet, uh, we use uh, Doodle to, to set up the time for the meetings. Uh, it was great to work together with colleagues step by step, by step module by module, and uh, I also uh, collaborated with other English and IT teachers in school, as I'm not an English teacher, I am a science teacher, so sometimes uh, I needed help, uh, and sometimes uh, when my colleagues couldn't uh, find me, they uh, asked for help for other uh, colleagues, uh, English and IT teachers in school. And what didn't work so well, of course, every teacher knows that there is always lack of time or maybe sometimes lack of time management skills. Um, IT and Internet surfing skills were needed for for um, taking part in the MOOCs. It was also a language barrier because English was not my colleague's strong, strong point. Many of my colleagues are uh, better in, uh, I don't know, French language or Italian language, and English was uh, for, for they a little bit uh, hard, but they could find help even uh, from their children and or, or from uh, their students at school. And because of a lot of many other duties of school, some, uh, some colleagues lost their motivation, uh, their self-motivation. Uh, uh, every teacher at some point feels a little bit overwhelmed with all the duties in the school. So this was my experience during the face-to-face -face, um, phase. Now, Elena. OK. Oh, no, we can't Anna, hear you. We don't, we don't hear you. Yeah. It's same. Uh, You're still muted. Yeah. Well, I hope now you're back. No, no, actually. Arana, can you hear us? Can you speak now? And sometimes uh, the the teams react very slowly, so uh, maybe you're clicking twice because you can't. It's a brief moment where we can hear you, and then it goes back to mute. So just try to click once on the microphone button, and then just wait. Now we can hear you, Elena. You can go on. Really? Yes. Okay. Yes. Okay. Yeah. I'll try. I Thank don't you. click any longer. And I'm sorry, I'm so sorry, but the problem is that it's very hot here in Italy in these days, and my computer is suffering so hard from uh, for the heat. So yeah, you're I, very lucky. We, we can't say the same in Brussels, so you're very yeah, excused. So I try to. Uh, yeah, to put it on presentation mode, and I hope keep my finger crossed that you can hear me from here uh, and forever. <laughs> well, um, as Christina said, uh, well, I uh, took the, well, I, I worked on this pilot in my school too, and my experience is more or less um, the same experience as Christina with some little difference. The first big difference is that I um, implemented the school-based case study at La Rabassi, which is my school, uh, but also I implemented the, the case study at regional level. Uh, I 
work um, well I they work both at uh, a secondary school and at uh, the regional office of the Ministry of Education in Italy. So um, with my colleagues in school, I uh, work with them, I took with them uh, this MOOC, Introducing Project-Based Learning in Your Classroom, who, uh, that was an already existed MOOC, a closed MOOC. So what we did at school was to take a MOOC, um, which wasn't uh, really and effectively uh, running but the the result was the same because um, I did more or less I, I took more or less the same steps that Christina took and the main ch challenges I faced uh, were the same challenges uh, the first one was time teachers were very busy uh, at the moment when we took the MOOC, but uh, I have to say that there's no good period of time to, to take uh, a course, to take a MOOC. The, my colleagues said, well, yeah, it's a very busy period, but there's no good period. So the problem was, the challenge was that they couldn't do the homework, the activities that the MOOC uh, had and uh, promoted. As for Christina, English uh, is a problem. For uh, a lot of Italian teachers, uh, English is not the, the most favorite language. Not for everyone, of course. The, the younger uh, teachers are quite familiar with English, but not the, the older. So uh, they they had this problem and also ICT was a problem. I have to say that we took this course in 2019, so before pandemic, before distance learning. And I have to say that uh, at that time, ICT was a bigger problem than now. But at that, that period of time, at that moment, yes, uh, ICT was a problem. So how, um, how could I do? So um, I tried to, to face and to, to, tr to, to find solutions uh, to these challenges. And the first one was to create uh, a group of teachers who worked and did uh, activities together. During the on-site meetings, we organized um, four face-to-face uh, -face meetings to take the four modules of the of the MOOC itself. Um, this solution, of course, led to the need for a reshaping of the path because I had to summarize the main concepts. Uh, I had to provide time for the reflection on the topics and uh, I had to give time to teachers to develop the activities during the meetings it's, uh, uh, themselves. And also the solution to, to meet together and to take the MOOC together was that meeting face to face helped the teachers with less language and or ICT skills because there was always someone who could uh, give a hand, who could translate some difficult passages, uh, who could help those teachers with less ICT skills. So what worked well? Uh, for me, the same as for Christina, this is the, the real voice of my uh, fellow colleagues. Um, my colleagues said that uh, it has been important to meet together to follow the course. Why? Well, because of course, uh, working together is much more enjoyable, but it is also true that it is much more productive because working together uh, obliges you to, to go further and you cannot give up so easily. And of course, having a tutor who helps you and guides you throughout the course is very useful. You can always uh, address to the tutor, you can always ask the tutor to explain, to clarify, to help you. And another very strong point, positive point, is that my colleagues said that they appreciated a lot the use of short videos uh, that helped the, the reflection. In a short time, they gave useful food for thought. 
or they illustrate how to use some educational tools. So these uh, were the main positive aspects. But of course, as Christina said, not everything went well. Uh, and the biggest problem, as I've already said before, is time. Time constraints, both at school at a personal level, uh, prevent the completion of the activities. But I have to say that thanks to this way of taking the, the MOOC, the course, we uh, reached the percentage of more than 50% of teachers completing the course, which was something very positive for us. All the teachers participated in the meetings, in the activities at school, but only, which is not only in my opinion, 50, more than 50% uh, completed the course and to busy period in school, I've already said about it. So, as Christina said before, now you've got the floor and you can, uh, you can say your opinion, your thoughts, your idea about taking online courses with other colleagues. So if you want to, to, to write down something on the Padlet, uh, you've got here the, um, the address, the link to the Padlet, it's very easy and you can uh, write down your opinion. Uh, you can see here the, the Padlet. Uh, please do tell us your experience if you, ever, if you have ever taken an online course with other colleagues, if you would like to try this way of training, and if yes, what would you like to find in such an experience? Have you ever thought about uh, taking a course, an online course with together with your colleagues. So please do uh, tell us your opinion, your experience. Uh, I don't know if uh, someone has put the the link. Uh, I did that enough. Yeah, OK. So if you want to, to tell us right now your opinion about taking online courses together with other colleagues. Don't be shy. We are very looking forward to <laughs> to hearing and to listening and to to reading from you. If I may say, Elena, from the chat and from the comments I see on the chat, uh, I, I think that participants uh, indeed have joined the online MOOCs, massive open online courses, and they really like this uh, self-paced element, the fact that you can develop yourself uh, professionally uh, in your own pace. And so I'm sure they, they have something to say on that. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm sure too. So, um, well, as we can come back to this Padlet at the, at the end of this webinar, I invite you to, to write something there and perhaps we can come back to, to our presentation and see the results, see the opinions of the participants uh, quite at the end of the, of the webinar. Okay, so here you are and the floor is yours, Christina. Thank you, Elena. Uh, I will share now with you the experience in the second phase, the online phase that start, started uh, with, uh, with the uh, period of the pandemic, of the COVID-19 uh, pandemic. Uh, I must confess we couldn't uh, uh, work uh, at all uh, during the first uh, first um, uh, period. I don't know in uh, April, May, June of 2020, 
when all the teachers were like in a shock because um, the pandemic and the uh, changes they needed to do to move the school online. So uh, not, not many of them were interested in uh, online courses at that point because they were overwhelmed with uh, all of the changes. At least that was the case in my school. But starting September, uh, all teachers uh, got uh, uh, well rested during the summer and uh, they realized that uh, the courses uh, can help them to organize a better online um, uh, space, a better online uh, school for, for their students. So we uh, joined again uh, uh, courses on uh, School Education Gateway Teacher Academy. But this time, as we couldn't meet in school, I have created a Facebook group. Uh, it, it was more than 100 members, not only from my school, but when I started working with my colleagues, um, more, uh, more teachers from uh, different parts of Romania and even in uh, Republic of uh, Moldova were interested as we uh, were um, talking in Romanian language and uh, uh, we uh, did some Zoom meetings. I registered some video tutorials for them uh, in Romanian language uh, every uh, week on Monday when a new module started. I went through it through the content uh, I pointed out when uh, they needed to take part in a webinar like this one or uh, what uh, they have to do for uh, for the tasks in that module. Uh, I helped them with using the Padlet or uh, other um, uh, tools that were needed for um, for the modules in the, the course. Uh, I used the Facebook group for announcements and polls, for news and articles, for question and answers for my colleagues. So I can say the Facebook phase was also a great one. Uh, about 57% uh, of the teachers involved in uh, studying uh, uh, for the MOOC in our Facebook group were successful. They finished the course and uh, obtained the certificate for it. So uh, it was a different experience, but not uh, a very bad one. It was uh, it was also uh, a good interaction and uh, we uh, worked together very well. Of course, I needed help. I um, uh, have uh, two colleagues that uh, were administrators of the group together with me. And when I couldn't be available, they uh, helped other colleagues. Uh, it was uh, also a teamwork. OK, so um, my experience was more or less the same again, because the first months uh, were really shocking. But um, thanks to the um, platform we use at regional level to, to deliver courses, uh, we decided to go online and to uh, MOOC together and to take MOOC together via Google Meet. Google Meet is the, the tool we use, the platform we use to, to deliver courses, to, to do video conferences. And this time we, um, we took uh, another MOOC together, but this time it was, it was a real MOOC, an effective uh, running MOOC, uh, always um, about project-based learning. Uh, project-based learning to enhance key competences and we uh, took it at the end of September and it, the, the result was really really encouraging because if I've said before that um, thanks to the face-to-face -face, uh, meetings uh, to, to take and taking the, the MOOC together uh, we reached more than 50% of teachers completing the course in this case 
uh, more than 80% of teachers could complete the course. They were very happy, you see here. Well, I said, please smile, but they they really, they they were really, really happy to, with this uh, new way for them to, to try and to take MOOC. And uh, thanks to this regional platform, as I said before, uh, I can uh, reach a, a regional group of teachers and digital trainers. Uh, and so I could create a sort of middle management uh, staff who uh, could implement this course and could uh, replicate this way of training, of taking professional development, professional development and meeting via meet, the audience was broader because we could reach um, a broader audience, a broader number of uh, teachers and I repeat above all, uh, digital trainers. So, uh, as Christina said, we shared presentations, padlets, learning diaries, uh, learning outcomes. So the, the interaction was really, really positive and productive. And um, another added value of these, um, this implementation, this uh, kind of activity was that starting, fr starting from the, the beginning of this year, um, our regional office decided to officially recognize any MOOC of Teacher Academy, European School Net Academy, e-twinning, uh, any MOOC taken by uh, teachers from our region. Um, we decided to create a sort of um, pathway, another, a sort of course, which is uh, actually a tutoring, a facilitating and, and an accompanying pathway for teachers who are taking any of these courses. So uh, we try to, to combine both aspects of taking MOOC together, but as the uh, the, the, the experience is becoming, is growing uh, very, very fast. We are trying to, uh, to realize this uh, sort of tutoring to help teacher to, teachers to take the MOOC autonomously, but at the same time, uh, having someone, a tutor who helps them, who uh, accompany them in uh, in the pathway, in the, in the progression of the course itself. And well, I don't want to, to spend much time uh, on, on this, but I think that the presentation will be shared after this webinar. And if you want to uh, listen or to read the, um, the opinions and the reflections of the participants in this, uh, in this experience, uh, well, you can have access and you can easily see what they have said and written. Christina. Thank you, Elena. Um, on this slide, uh, you can see uh, some uh, advice from both of us, from uh, our combined uh, experience during during the um, uh, pro the pilot project. So, uh, what uh, advice uh, for other schools we have? Start with a survey on the school staff needs on professional development. This way you, you know which course is more uh, interesting for your colleagues. Uh, designate a responsible person to monitor the whole team's progress in the course development. Um, together, everybody achieves more. Set up group studies as participants can support and motivate each other. Be very careful with time management tasks and deadline for the course chosen and create repositories with the material created in order to make use of them in other educational contexts that that can be very valuable for the whole uh, school. Uh, I can tell you we could use uh, the um, uh, materials and also the 
new um, uh, pedagogical uh, methods uh, and uh, um, the, for example, we also participated in a project based learning um, course and in um, uh, learning with the creativity and uh, uh, what we have learned there we could use also in our Erasmus Plus projects. Uh, we could use in extracurricular activities, but also, as I said, in um, uh, setting the uh, online lessons and uh, in face-to-face uh, -face lessons in class. So uh, we we could use uh, in uh, in uh, a lot of uh, context the uh, what what we have learned during the MOOCs. Yeah, and as I said before, now it's time. I've seen that <clears throat> you haven't been so shy at it since the beginning, and you have written uh, quite a lot. Uh, uh, yeah, and uh, some of you are, as Effie said before, uh, some of you are quite familiar uh, with MOOCs, and uh, yeah, I. I saw in the chat also that uh, some of you said that the best uh, and the most positive aspect is the peer review. And um, actually working together uh, with a group of colleagues, with a group of teachers from uh, your region, from your country, um, already gives you a sort of peer review. So uh, I think that uh, this um, this case study has been a great opportunity to test with our uh, colleagues the the importance of working together, of having a peer review, and uh, try to learn new ways uh, of training and to to take in professional development. Uh, so yeah, the. Uh, and some uh, some comments here. Yeah, at the beginning it was it was impossible to to add uh, posts. So a lot of colleagues put participants put uh, comments that uh, yeah you see um, yeah the idea is go through all the possibilities the opportunities both from. Um, technology ICT point of view and also and of course methodological point of view. So uh, I think that the idea is uh, is of interest for a lot of you. OK, so we can come back to. Uh, to, to the slide to the presentation. And as, as Benjamin and Afi and Christina said at the beginning, I think that uh, taking this, uh, this MOOC, it could be uh, a good opportunity to, to deepen, to, to reflect uh, on this, uh, this way of learning together. And uh, from a personal point of view, I must say to you that I'm a little bit, uh, well, I'm a little, I'm proud of <laughs> this course also because the picture of the, of the cover of the course is the group of my colleagues taking the MOOC together. So um, I have to, to say a, a big, big thanks to, to them because without them uh, the, the experience and the pilot uh, wouldn't be have been possible. So thanks to all my colleagues and this is a part of my school. <laughs> and to sum up the idea that we had is let's move together because together we can just to paraphrase uh, another much more important uh, personality. Many thanks, Elena. Many thanks, uh, Christina. Thank you both for, for sharing this, uh, this experience you had. It's, it's very interesting to see it. Uh, 
Uh, I would like to invite participants to post any questions they may have in the chat for you so I can address them. Um, I have also one question myself, actually. I would like to ask you if you saw, probably you saw, but I would like you to hear from you. Uh, what was the, the difference that you saw in the school culture because you joined this activity? Did you see uh, this collaborative, collaborative element flourishing because of this initiative? Did you collaborate it also on other activities or on other projects because of these uh, new relationships that you started building with, with your colleagues? So it's, it's interesting to hear that impact as well. Christina, would you like to go first? Yes, sure. Uh, yes, uh, I, 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 I've seen uh, uh, change. Uh, my colleagues are more confident in um, sharing between them, in involving each other in other projects because uh, they've seen the results are, are great when we work together as a team. Uh, so yeah, there were positive changes uh, for my school uh, uh, after the, the involvement in this uh, pilot project. And thank you very much for that to School Education Gateway. Yeah, the same, the same for Elena, me. Elena, what about you? Yeah, the same for me and for my school and for my uh, group of uh, regional uh, teachers, because, um, you know, um, in, in an ideal world we are always and all um, we all agree about the importance of collaboration but when you have to do it uh, really and in practice you then you discover the the, the importance and uh, some uh, aspects that you may uh, you, you don't have uh, taking into into account. So uh, yes, for me too, it has been really, really important. And for instance, uh, working on Erasmus Plus projects, uh, e-twinning projects, um, thanks to the participation in this uh, pilot, in this uh, experience, has helped a lot my colleagues to involve themselves deeper and deeper in other projects of our school. Excellent. Many thanks then for, for sharing this experience with us. Uh, before closing, I would like to, to go back to this call that uh, Ben mentioned also at the beginning. So we invite teachers uh, to apply and join a new group that we are about to create. Um, the group of pilot teachers, I don't know if you see my screen. Yeah, OK, you see my screen as well. So the group of pilot teachers uh, will focus on defining and implementing uh, actions supporting other teachers who lack relevant skills to benefit from the School Education Gateway and the training online professional development offer. Encourage those who would uh, normally be less interested to participating in such professional development formats and recognize the work of those who successfully do. So this new pilot will continue actually the work presented by exploring uh, innovative formats and activities that can facilitate the use of e twinning and school education gateway professional development at school level. And it also aims at facilitating the use of other professional development formats that are offered across the two platforms. Uh, for example, short courses or restricted courses or webinar series or webinars, etc. Uh, the exact activities will be determined together with the pilot school selected, uh, but the idea is that we establish a longer term group of pilot schools that we can rely on for developing and innovating the professional development offer across e-training and school education gateway. So what are the main tasks uh, that this group of teachers will be asked to carry? Uh, first one is to participate in a one day workshop in the future classroom lab happening in Brussels and plan to, plan to take place in December uh, if measures allow it hopefully. Uh, then plan and implement a set of pilot actions at school or regional level, support the creation of resources that will serve as a guide to other teachers and schools who want to benefit from school education gateway and e-training professional development offer, 
participate in semi-regular online meetings with the coordinator of the pilot to allow for a more enriching exchange of experience and knowledge and provide feedback and evaluation data via uh, online questionnaires and interviews. But if you are interested to join this uh, this group of teachers, you have to qualify. So you have to to have this selection criteria. So you have to be a teacher at a school that currently holds the e-twinning schools label. Uh, be proficient. Uh, has have a proficient knowledge of English. Uh, be available to travel to Brussels and participate in the workshop and also in the semi-regular uh, online meetings. Be an active and experienced teacher who is already taking or willing to take an active role in the development of their school and have the explicit support of your school leader. Be active on social media so you can disseminate this, uh, this news to other te teachers and uh, increase the engagement. And have an interest in becoming a mentor to support other teachers during the life cycle of this uh, pilot group. And maybe because you will need um, there might be a possibility to you will be asked to create something. We would like you to have some uh, relevant content creation uh, skills. And as you understand, the benefits are quite uh, obvious. I would say you will have an opportunity to be a member of the selected group uh, for this activity of the school education gateway and e-training and test out new professional development format formats. Um, you have the opportunity to participate in um, in in uh, in a workshop happening at the future classroom lab uh, with all the travel and accommodation costs of course uh, covered uh, you will have the possibility to be part of an international community of teachers whose work will be disseminated through the two platforms and through the channels of the two platforms and thereby gaining more visibility and recognition at international level and of course, also having the opportunity to get your previous work on school education gateway and it training more recognized at school level and uh, inspire colleagues uh, with the support of the group. And maybe also learn something through this uh, through this group as you will join a group of like minded colleagues who all uh, have the same interests uh, to participate. So uh, here you have the application form. Uh, I'm going to share the link also in the chat. The deadline to apply for this uh, group is the 15th of September. So please uh, feel free to, to submit, uh, to fill in the form and join us in this uh, group. And we will be more than happy to, to welcome you and, uh, and work uh, with you in this, in this activity. Uh, please note that uh, yeah, a specific number of people will be selected, 10, 10 teachers, so uh, everybody will be notified for, for the result until the end of September after the, the deadline. So I think that's it from, from us. I don't know, Elena, Ben or Christina, if you have a final word on this uh, presentation, if you want to share something else with the participants. Well, from my side, a great thanks to, to School Education Gateway, to all of you, and thanks for having this uh, fantastic opportunity to, to experiment, to try, to learn, and to, to learn together, which is the, the most important uh, way of learning, in my opinion. I would also like to encourage the participants, my colleagues, to, to register for this great opportunity to become, uh, like we all like to say, a pilot teacher. We were the pilot, but we are always happy to, to receive more, more teachers in our uh, group, in our uh, great group of friends. We are already a group of friends working together in a great project. Thank you very much. Thank you both. Uh, then I see some comments in the chat already asking about if you can apply. If you read the, the information in the form, I think you will uh, 
uh, and the criteria that you have to to fulfill in order to apply, I think it will be uh, clear for you. So yeah, please apply. We would be more than happy to receive your application. And uh, many thanks for joining this webinar. Uh, we wish you to have a nice uh, summertime, a very well deserved uh, summer holidays. Uh, as we are approaching the end of the school years in most of the European countries. And uh, yeah, many thanks for joining us. Uh, thank you, Christina. Thank you, Elena. Uh, have a lovely, lovely evening and we, we stay in touch. Thank you indeed. Bye bye. Bye. Have a nice summer. Thanks everyone. Goodbye.